Hello, welcome everyone. I am so excited to have you all here today and we are welcoming author A.S. Fenichel, Andy Fenichel. Thank you so much for being here today and talking about your new release. Oh, I'm thrilled. I can't, I can't wait uh, for everyone to read it. Can you believe that the Wallflowers of West Lane is wrapping up? I can't. Like they're all behind me. Here they are. Here's here's uh, not even for Duke. Um, it's a long, a long few years getting them all out, but uh, I'm glad that Aurora finally has her happily ever after. Just none, of, no one deserves it more than Aurora. It felt like a long wait. She was the one that we really wanted to see have her happily ever after, and we had to get through the whole series till we finally got. Yeah. To see it. Yeah, but that's just the way it works out sometimes. <laughs> Good things happen to those who wait, right? That's right. So I wanted to ask you a few questions to learn a little bit about the series, about your writing process, and maybe get to know a little bit about you behind okay. the writing. Okay. Um, so the first question we had from your Facebook group was, what was the hardest book to write out of this series? Out of this series? Um, hmm. Let's look. Um, you know, so not even for Duke wasn't hard because I had had so long to think about her. And mm -hmm. I mean, we, we really knew her by the time she got her book. Mm -hmm. Um, and you'd think that would have been the case with Mercy as well, but Mercy was hard to write. Um, she's really complex yeah. and, and that's what made the book hard to write. She's, you know, not your typical debutante. She's not wealthy. She's an orphan who was raised by an aunt and then sent off to school when the aunt remarried. Um, and then, uh, and, and the aunt is wonderful. Um, but women did what they had to do to get by. So for me, um, Mercy was the hardest character to write. So Capturing the Earl was, was the hardest book. Yeah. Yeah, she's a very complex character. Um, she is. She's, she's always thinking something. She's always, there's always something happening in the background. And um, you suspect from early on that Mercy had something to hide. And I, I don't want to give too much away for people who haven't read the book, but in Mercy's book, you find out that she did have something to hide um, with regard to Aurora's first husband. So um, if you haven't read the book, you should read it <laughs> and you should find out what exactly Mercy did. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So uh, what? is your process for coming up with names for the characters in the book? I try really hard um, to pick names that mean something. Um, like Aurora means light um, or, or sun. Um, Mer Mercy or Mercedes, Mercy means mercy. Right. Um, and she does, they, they fit their names. Um, I really try to have them fit their names. And then sometimes secondary characters, not so much in this series, because I knew all four characters before we started. Um, but in earlier series, you know, secondary characters just begged for a book and they weren't necessarily supposed to get a book. So um, sometimes their names don't necessarily come from anywhere other than I needed a name that doesn't start with these five letters and it has to be a name that pleases me. Um, so I really try to have the names all mean something and most of the time that works out. Did you already have the names picked out as you were writing this series like early on when you were developing the characters? Um, so the, the, let me think, let me think how many of them so I think everybody except for Wesley is in the first book. Even Garrett is in the first book. Um, but Wesley, I don't think shows up until 
the second or third book. That's that's Mercy's husband. Um, but yes, I think I even had his name picked out. I think if I look back at my little book, because I, I keep, I'll show you. Hang on. <laughs> I keep <laughs> a little book for every story. And I keep I keep them in a little binder. So every um, most of the time that the, they have names beforehand. Uh, but I had four women in this series, so I knew I needed four men. Um, so they all they all existed prior for this series not always the case that kind of leads into so do you plot out the whole story <laughs> or series in this case ahead of time or you do just kind of follow where the characters are leading I plot um I I loosely plot I don't some people like it's very meticulous and every scene is mapped out um i have a story arc so i know beginning middle end um most of the time i know how we're getting there so i have like a loose plot sometimes the characters do unexpected things and that changes the plot and then i adjust and i just adjust everything forward um but Yes, I, I, I plot it. I don't plot the whole series more than I know what the books are going to be about. Right. Like we knew Aurora came from an abusive marriage from the first page of um, The Earl Not Taken. And therefore we knew her book had to be about recovery. Right. Um, and and um, yeah, so I know what the plots are going to be about even like with the demon hunters, um, I have like little that this was, you know, demon hunters was plotted a long time ago, seven years, I think. Um, so I have like little cue cards that have uh, the book title and what the plot is going to be about. And they don't even necessarily have who the characters are going to be for the books. But I knew like the demon part needed to have a, a beginning and a middle and an end throughout the books, because obviously we want a satisfying ending to all of that, which that'll happen in January. Right. Do you people watch to pick up little personality traits or do you mirror out of the people in your life? How do you get the little nuances to your characters? Um, both, but mostly, they're real to me they're in my head and when they are faced with a situation which obviously most of the time I create this I say that most of the time like there's some <laughs> other influence but sometimes it seems like that to me um when things are thrown at them it's just a natural way to respond to that you know mercy is not going to respond the same way as poppy to right. the same outside influence she's just not she's much more reserved she's grown up you know trying to stay out of the limelight because you know she's taken a lot of criticism for for lots of things for being an orphan and for having rich friends yeah. you know um so she would try to stay out of a situation whereas poppy will dive in head first <laughs> and everybody get out of her way, yeah. um, ex except when it comes to her mother-in-law, but pretty much with everything else. Poppy is such a firecracker. Yes. I, I love how you really kept, they're such a tight-knit group of friends, but they all have such unique personalities. They really stand out on their own, which they makes, do. the books they have do. such unique personalities for this series. Like, nobody felt like they blended into someone else like they were their own person and their own story to tell well thank you i i like that they they are their own people and in my head they're real people um so <laughs> scary sometimes in here <laughs> <laughs> it's okay that's what makes the best stories is when they feel they feel real to you then i think that it comes across and they feel real to us as the reader i agree
So if we are peeking at your desk while you are writing, is there anything that you kind of have for your routine? Are you drinking anything in particular every time? Music on? Like, what's the setup? I, um, <clears throat> I rarely write at my desk. I edit at my desk. I plot at my desk. I do social media at my desk. But I write either out on the porch if the weather is good or I write in a recliner in my office. Sometimes I write in the living room while the baseball game is on. Um, so I, I rarely find sitting in my chair at my desk very creative atmosphere for me. Um, but I always have water. That's my drink of choice. Um, I usually have that little uh, leather binder you just saw because the notes for all the books that I'm writing or plotting are in that. Um, right now, there are five notebooks in there, but only three of them are active um, books, um, which maybe seems like a lot, but they're in different stages of, of their process. Mm -hmm. And uh, once they go to publish, then I'll take them out of that book and put something else in. Um, sometimes I have my planner which I'm obsessed with, my planner, uh, depending on how long I, like if I'm sitting out on the porch and I think I'm gonna be out there for four or five hours, just in case somebody calls or somebody emails, I like to have my planner handy so that I don't have to put the computer down, come into the office. Sometimes I have to take the computer with me to the office. So <laughs> I usually have my planner with me too. Um, I never travel without my planner, even for, vacation <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm obsessed with my planner I love you it you have multiple planners right I do I do but right now I I so I started the year with like four and now I'm down to two I have my <laughs> everyday everything's in it planner and I have a social media planner so that I know um what I'm posting about and what I want to talk about and if I have a blog, I'm going to write and I, I try to keep all that in one. It doesn't fit in the other one. There's too much stuff in the other one because the other one has personal life and, and writer life. And it's also, it's kind of like a diary in a way, because I always write what I accomplished that day. Like did I, I edited 50 pages. Well, that would be a lot of pages, but <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, or I, I wrote 3000 words. Also, that's a lot of words, but, <laughs> but some days are good. So that's really, that's a great tip. I love that to put accomplishments in and not just crossing off everything that you've done, but then you can look back and see, I did all this this week. Yes. I actually have a section at the bottom um, you know, because it's a it's a weekly planner, so there and I have a columns planner, so that it's a vertical planner, and I have everything I'm going to do that day broken down to home and writing, um, and something else that I can't think of right now. And then at the bottom, I have achieved, so mm -hmm. that's that's where I put what I actually did. Yeah. Not to mention, I've checked off all the things I. Yeah, you know, good. But I still write like, you know, um, wrote vengeance, 2000 words, wrote the holiday book, a thousand words. So that I, and it's, I've actually gone back to old planners recently. I had my 10 year um, publishing anniversary and I went back to my very first planner, uh, which actually started after my publishing. I just didn't keep one before then. And uh, it was fun, like going through it. It was even then, like I wrote the silliest things. Talk to Carla today. <laughs> I still talk to Carla every day. <laughs> Aww, that's a fun way to do it. Cause sometimes it seems like it's so much extra to keep a journal or a diary, but yeah. using your planner to do that is fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I prefer it. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to bare my soul. I do that in the books every day. So I don't want to do that in a journal, but I do want to keep my, my life, not for anybody else's sake, but for my sake to, to yeah. just go back and, and see what it was like, what, what I was doing then, how different it is from now. 
um, I've used many different kinds of planners over the years and uh, the last three years, the same one though, but um, I've been through lots of them. And then people send me planners. My agent sends a planner every year and I, I try using that and it, it worked for a little while. And then I'm like, no, no, I'm going back to this one. And there are some people who change their planner every month. So I'm, I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> Yeah, that's fascinating to learn. Okay, so final question. This is a yeah. toughie. Which wallflower do you most identify with? Which wallflower do I most identify with? Hmm. Um, oh, that's so hard. Maybe yeah. Faith. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm a widow and Aurora is a widow, but I had a beautiful first marriage. So it's hard for me to, um, to compare those, those experiences. Um, so I, I, but I understand, like, I, I think faith because faith um, is dauntless. Mm -hmm. You know, she, you cannot scare faith. And she, if you read, um, where are we misleading the Duke? There's plenty of scary, just like little, little warning sign. There's a lot of scary things that happen. Um, but faith is never lets her fear get in the way of what she wants or doing the right thing. And I, I like to think that I'm like that. There's, I, I always think I'm, am I not doing something because I'm afraid of it? You know, like we talked about before, before we started recording, um, I moved to Europe and, um, you know, before I did that, I, I thought, gosh, this is a crazy thing to do. You're just going to drop everything, grab your cat and move to Europe. Mm -hmm. But I thought, well, if the reason you're not doing it is because you're afraid, then you should definitely do it. So I did. Um, and it was a great experience. Um, I've never regretted. I maybe regretted the first day in Europe because that was a nightmare. <laughs> but after that, it was it was perfect. After that, you have to figure it's all uphill because moving your whole life to a country that you can't even like back then we didn't have cell phones that worked in Europe. So I had to use the pay phone. The instructions were in Dutch, so I couldn't understand how to use a payphone. I had to ask some strange man to help me make a phone call, um, but it all worked out. <laughs> yeah, so faith, I think. That's a pretty fearless thing to do. It's not fearless, but it's, um, it was scary, but it, I think that when you go outside your comfort zone, that's when the good stuff happens. Mm. Um, it did for faith. Yeah, that's a great tip to end on. Well, thank you so much, Andy. It was really fun learning about the books and the characters and how you created them and a little bit more about you and which wallflower that you identify with. Um, I'm sure there's a little bit of you in all of them in certain ways. Oh, there's a little bit of me in every character I write and yeah. my mother. <laughs> There's a little bit of my mother in most characters I write. Oh, that's funny. Now we all need to meet your mother. <laughs> She's something. <laughs> oh, geez. Thank you so much. I hope everyone Thanks, will check out the series. It's a fantastic series. And even though book four just released, you can always feel free to start with book one. And now you know you'll be able to quickly read through all of them as I like to do because I get very impatient waiting between books in a series. That's right. We're at the end. You can read them all. Yes. Um, and where can everyone come and find you on um, social media? So I'm. I have, my website is uh, asfenichelle.com and uh, pretty much it, it's as fenichelle for everything so a is an apple s is in sam f as in frank e n i c h e l so you can at as fenichelle for instagram and twitter and um, um as fenichelle on on facebook as well so should, I'm, I'm easy to find and i'd love to to visit with everyone and then um, your Facebook group, if they wanted to join your private group. 
If you want to join my private group, it's uh, Andy's Angels. So it's uh, A-N-D-I-E apostrophe S Angels on on uh, on your Facebook. So just uh, send me a little note so I know why you're joining and I don't think you're, you know, somebody shouldn't be joining, but definitely join. And thank you to everyone from Andy's Angels that is watching this the first time around. Yes, love my angels. All right, thank you everyone and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.